Wewe ni wa Hiyo swali kuna majibu nyingi but I can guess what you're asking. And the answer is baba yangu ni mzungu ni mwengereza. The question is why are you so white? <laughs> but ka kwa ukweli wewe ulikuwa unataka kujua mimi ni nani? Mimi ni mama. Mimi ni mkenya. Mimi ni mwalimu mshairi. And before you get started on what a Kenyan looks like, I'm a Nairobian Diani baby whose mothering mission spans a nation and I always felt I was a mother. I always knew I would never know what being a mother felt like until I was a mother. <laughs> and I was right. Until you place your hand on your belly and know that you're sharing your own internal space or are blessed to be the arms for a baby who has no other place, you find out there was more room in you than you knew could fit into one soul that nothing is too heavy for their sake you break walls but i always felt i was a mother and on that too i was right you see my world view is one of an unabashed empath the mother in me knows intrinsically that no one is okay until everyone is okay that all oppression is related that it cannot be understated that we fight these wars for our young and still somehow forget to leave the world less messed up for when their child rearing turn comes i always felt i was a kenyan a biracial kenyan yes i am half english which has obvious implications on my biology and less obvious implications on my expectations of integrity but i've never felt i was anything but kenyan we too our kenya we children of different nose shape hair texture and skin you we are your children too na kuna venye popote mungu ataniwezesha kuenda nitasifu tu kenya na roho yangu italilia hadi nirudi home vyema so weza nichukua tu venye utajisikia but ukiamua kunisengenya ungejua ukenya yangu imenituma nijue kuongea na lugha mbili na kuelewa ka tano so angalau nisengenya na lugha sielewi ka kichina au kitaliano <laughs> I've always felt I was a teacher. Some of my earliest memories are of teaching babies how to talk and count and sing. Everything I have learned from then on I will still teach. Given a moment's span of attention, I love to share information. It is an all-purpose tool. Information can be anything from a light bulb to a cradle to a weapon. Akili ni mali si mchezo hakuna kitu yenye mimi naijua yanaweza kukusaidia mimi nitakushow I've known I was a po poet since I was five. and in the years of handwriting practice mama insisted I do I had plenty of time to visualize rhyming words too so by the time I met my angelo and eminem's world views I knew my horizons were lined with puns metaphors and earth moving viewers yes viewers because our spoken word artists are created by you you have the power to crush the poet as soon as they step on stage kwa hivyo kwa mafupi mimi ni mama mkenya mwalimu mshairi kwa hayo yote namshukuru mungu lakini hiyo ya mwisho inastahili pia ni washukuru nyinyi Thank you. Wow. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey, hey. Wow. Mama Kenya drop those bars. <laughs> welcome. Wow. Welcome to the show. That was absolutely powerful. Thank I you. felt it. I felt it. Your motion, your facial expressions, everything was just mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Wow. Hi Raya. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Of course. Of course. I'm so so excited to have you here because you are an award winning spoken word artist you're a poet and i love everything your style your hair you have the wow. look <laughs> down to a t raya so please tell us about that piece and what inspired it it's a, that's a very interesting story actually yeah. i was auditioning for churchill mm -hmm. oh uh, for churchill okay yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and i was coming on with a lot of very strong messages mm -hmm. that were kind of because as as i described in the piece i have a, a 
a habit of just teaching, you know? Yeah. So I'm coming in and I'm saying, you need to love each other, or, you know, all these deep messages. Yes. And one of the critiques I was given at the table, it's called the table, yeah. where you audition. Yeah. 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 Your meza, yeah. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> one of the critiques that I was given is that when I step on stage, there's questions. Mm -hmm. Like, who is this person? Yeah. Like, how come she looks like that and she talks so heavily? Mm -hmm. And like, no, you need to answer some of those questions. So your audience, because they need to know who you are too, you know? Yeah. So I wrote that piece to kind of say, okay, mm -hmm. actually that's true. Mm -hmm. This is who I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Wow, you mentioned in the piece actually that you've been writing since you were five. Mm -hmm. You've been doing this art since you were five. I'd like to know how th how's that journey been and how does that feed into your, um, into your art? Uh, I think everybody, every artist needs to continue growing yeah. uh, at, at every step of the way. So I'd say between five and 11 years old, I wasn't doing anything serious with it, yeah. maybe just experimenting. Mm -hmm. But when I got to 11, no, this then when you when you when you're nearing teenage years, you start having a lot more to talk about somehow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's upheavals that you'll, you'll take more seriously. You start yeah. looking at the so world and you're like, oh, that's not fair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. um, so that's when I started writing consistently, okay. um, and it's a healing tool, mm -hmm. um, a tool that helps me be understood. Um, when I was young, I, I I used to have, let's say, some difficulty sometimes in talking to people because I get some social anxiety. Okay. So then I would end up going back and then I'd be like, oh, maybe I should have said this. Yeah. Maybe I should have said this. So I just write it down mm -hmm. and then, ah, peace of mind. Oh, wow. <laughs> what is the writing process for, like, you? Do you think about it and you're like, stanza by stanza? Do you plan it or does it just flow from within you? It depends on the piece. Yeah. Yeah. So something like the piece I just said, mm -hmm. because I had intention to write it, it was a stand by, stanza by stanza kind of piece mm -hmm. where I'm just like, okay, I want to be thorough and make sure I include everything. Mm -hmm. But um, very often there's pieces that I battle with a topic in my head yeah. for a long time. Yeah. And I even ask people about it as mm -hmm. I talk to people. Mm -hmm. I learn mm -hmm. more on the subject, I research mm -hmm. it. And once all the pieces fit together perfectly in my head that I understand this thing and now I know how I want to frame it, then all the words just come. Yeah. <laughs> and are there any people in your life who have been sort of mentors to you? The people, I know we all have someone in our life or several people in our lives who are like your guiding light. They keep you grounded. They let you know when you're doing wrong, when you're doing right, just guiding you through this whole process of poetry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I would I would have to say first sister Wana Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she's, she's such a great inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, she, of course, she's the the first person who I was inspired to do like my own show because mm -hmm. she has poetic shows that she that she um, has written and performs. They're amazing. Um, I have had the blessing of being able to work with many mentors, yeah. so I wouldn't be able to go through all of them. But just to mention a few, I'd say Mumbi Kaigwa, Memuna Jalo. Mm -hmm. um, uh, can it be? Yeah. Can it be handed me my first microphone? Mm -hmm. And I don't even know why he did it. I was so, I was so <laughs> unprepared. <laughs> I really failed. <laughs> but the confidence is here. I mean, look at you now. Yes. Look at you now, Raya. Look at you now. And I want to hear more, Tabby. Give us another piece. Yes. We're, another we're, we're itching. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Yes. Go ahead. All right. As she should be. Shosho and I would take trips to see the animal orphanage. Nairobi is cold, she would say to me. Still, I would beg for those bright red, red devil ice lollies that would paint my lips red. We would watch lion cubs stretch and stick out their tongues. They looked like teddies. Mama would take me to 40 Thieves. There was this fallen tree on the beach. We as kids would run down sunny, sand-dusted stairs to reach and compete for who could climb up it first and swing from it or stand on it and sing from it. I'm the king of the castle. You're the dirty rascal. Nye, 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 boo, boo. <laughs> it's ironic how even then we stood atop fallen pieces of Mother Earth to pretend Lord over each other. I visited again in my teens. The tree then sunk beneath sand so low that that castle branch, I could sit on it. The stairs were buried too. The last time I visited, just the tip of that swinging branch peaked 
A Tafoti thieves that is now half the size. The sea and the sand have claimed back their property. Daddy took me snorkeling in Tiwi Beach and we could see kaleidoscope coral reef with uncountable neon colored fish darting between their rippled surfaces. But when I visited again in my teens with him, my brother and my sister, all we could do was watch out for sea urchins. As adults, we clamber, with kings of the earth pumping the most fumes above us, no filter, while we stream live threads and trends and forget not to litter. Besides us, little footprints patter, licking lollies and dropping wrappers. My daughter has learnt to talk. I wonder, how will I explain Hurricane Katrina Josephine, to her, when it's happened again and again, and we are yet to stop making the very same mistakes? Our Mother Earth is not human. Were she person, she would be buried already under the weight of her selfish children. And truth be told, to be mother is a thing of beauty. We don't have to make her look haggard, then fault her continuity. And there is hope here everywhere I look. Because if all the world needs is for people like us to make the right decisions in rooms like these, then we are here to save the sea from emissions, to save the land from the sea. Because it should be more than a dream that our great, great, great grandchildren get to be on an earth that is still beautiful, as she should be. Thank you. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Yet again, she hits us with another one, another one. Wow. Raya, you already have fans. You guys remember to talk to us on social media. Our page is at KTN Life and Style. Use the hashtag Artistic Tuesday and hashtag KTN Life and Style. Let me read out some of your fan mail, Raya. Sunhood says, I am proud seeing my role model, Raya Wambui. She has trained me and given me platforms. DJ Vic254 says, Raya Tamar, so beautiful. I love the way I can speak Kiswahili. Ni Kiswahili na English. If you know, you know. <laughs> DJ Vic254, locked show. So great. Thank you so much, you guys, for your feedback. How does it make you feel, Raya, knowing that you're inspiring people out there? Really, really amazing, really, because oh, I, I knew I wanted to do this from when I was very young. At that time, there weren't that many people doing it. And so I really sounded crazy, you know, I want to grow up, I want to be a poet when I grow up. And it's like, no, but that's not a revenue, how are you going to eat? <laughs> and so having, having a situation where not just me, but as a, we're a whole generation, mm -hmm. teardrops, Mufasa, we're a whole generation of like front runners, mm -hmm. and we didn't just stop at, at doing, uh, at performing. Mm -hmm. We also create events, we also create platforms, because we know there's so much talent. Yes. There's so many voices that need to be heard. Even the story that we were listening to earlier, you know somebody can think that he's exaggerating saying that bullet, uh, the sound of bullets sounds like a ringtone. Ring tone, it's yeah. not an exaggeration, it's a true story about a specific place that he knows. Mm -hmm. So without all of our voices collectively coming together to talk about our realities, mm -hmm. we don't have a good picture of, we don't have a full picture of where we are, we don't have a full picture of who we are. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, I wow. feel like you're going to start crying <laughs> and it's making me emotional because you're so passionate when you speak and that is exactly why you were made and born to do this. And your confidence is just so inspiring, Tebby. Wow. Before the water works, mm -hmm. I have another question. <laughs> Regarding your last piece, um, you spoke a lot about being a mother and um, your child. And so how has being a mother changed your art and the way that you, you, pr you present? It, it, uh, it has. But I'm not sure it's changed it directly. I think it's more of a maturity level that came, you know, with being responsible for a human being. You, you start having to be a bit more focused. So, I don't know. I've changed, I've changed as an artist as in terms of growing, in terms of the fact that I'm still, I still fit into the revolutionary genre of, of poetry. But when, if I look back like five years, 
I was doing a lot of angry poetry, like angst poetry, yeah. <laughs> where I was like shouting and throwing hands. Mm -hmm. And somewhere bet uh, uh, along the way, in my, my daughter being born and my growth, I realized that I don't think that's so useful. Mm -hmm. I feel like we need to inspire positive change more than we need to shout down um, things that other people are doing that we think are wrong. Because it's better. It's better to do it yourself right than to just like, okay, you know, um, that person should be doing their life more the way I think. <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. So I try to be more of practicing what I preach than shouting at anyone anymore. Wow. <laughs> right. That's, That's amazing. absolutely amazing. Raya, tell us, where can we find you on social media? I know you've done so, so much and there's a lot of content online and I'm very sure that people are just itching and dying for more. Tell us where we can find you on social media. All right, so my writing is on rayawamboy.wordpress.com. Mm -hmm. So R-A-Y-A, -A, oh boy, hope you know how to spell that one. Mm -hmm. Then <laughs> um, on Facebook, I have a page, Raya Wamboy as well. Mm -hmm. um, I have a username which is Rea Kaboy. My shusho used to call me Kaboy. Okay. Kaboy. <laughs> yeah, with the apostrophe and the accent. And then on Twitter, it's Rea underscore one boy. Yeah. And YouTube also. Yeah. Yeah, because if you just search Rea one boy, you'll see like videos that have been uploaded, um, some by me, some by other people, right. or performances that I've done. All right. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. And we would love to have you time and time again because I'm sure you're going to keep growing and you're going to keep producing amazing things. So right now we're going to go back to our visual artists right over there. And they're going to tell us where it is that we can find them on social media. And if you want to buy some of their paintings and their drawings, by the way, they're here to tell you. So guys, let us know. Tunaweza kuwa pata wapi social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything. Okay, for me, I go by the name Tufton Graphite mm -hmm. on Facebook. The same name Tufton Graphite on IG and on Twitter again. Tufton Graphite. All right. So if you wanna if you wanna get a, a painting, mm -hmm. a portrait, so you can ju just reach to me through there. There are my contacts there. You can DM me there. Mm -hmm. And if you still want some more of my art pieces, I still have some t-shirts, my Tufson Graphite t-shirts. Mm -hmm. So my pictures are there, the art, the t-shirts, everything. Mm -hmm. You can just DM me and you can get something. All right, Job? Yeah. You can get me at Instagram and f on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Instagram, Luchi Jobs. Mm -hmm. And on Facebook, Job Lutaya. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us on the show, guys. And I cannot emphasize this enough. KTN, I can sing. Season two is back. All you need to do to enter this competition is send us a two-minute mini video of you singing. Tell us who you are, your contacts, where you live, so that you can get the chance to make yourself into a star we saw Masi Opande did it the last season she's doing big things right now that could be you and before we close up we are going to have a performance by the Kenya Sax Chronicles accompanied by the gorgeous and beautiful Raya Wambui with some spoken word
shadows cast forward in time shade us from naivety. Our memories, though scarring, recreate new entities. The journey traveled should be marveled rather than forgotten. The shadows cast forward in time shade us from naivety. Our memories, though scarring, recreate whole entities. Smile at life's hypocrisies. In the face of adversities, experiences are weapons. Grazing intensities are our path's real lessons. Wake up to flowers or coffee or both. Frown only to contemplate the lessons still unlearned. And then smile. as we have it has been an absolutely fantastic morning i hope that tabby and i brightened up your day and we've given you a good start to the day remember to tune in tomorrow for relationship wednesday and my goodness tabby tomorrow the premiere of style with crystal from 8 30 a.m it's gonna be lit it's gonna be a situation and of course remember katie and i can see sing season two is back so make sure you get in your submissions before the deadline which is the 20th of november you're gonna send us a two minute video of yourself singing tell us about yourself tell us where you live and also give us your contacts tabby that's all have for you today. had fun today so good it was such a good morning i'm so glad that you enjoyed the show tabby welcome to the family thank you and very much right now we have just got to say adios i wish we could stay here forever but we got to go but we are going to leave you with the delightful sounds of the kenya sax chronicles